Welcome back to Heart of the Hustle with Dr. Patrick Wolk. Today, we're very lucky to have a, an amazing business leader here from the community, Lenny Cezanne. Lenny Cezanne, tell us a little bit about your businesses. I know you're currently working with the Murphy business uh, and also the, where we met was the uh, uh, urban, I think it's Urban Capital Network. Yeah, and I think that's really an amazing business that you've started out. And really, if you could tell us a little bit about what's going on with those businesses, tell us a little bit more and you inform the audience of what I've learned you know, in regard to your Urban Capital Network. I really think that's an amazing opportunity. I think our audience would really love to hear about it. Sure, thank you. Um, thanks for having me. So um, Murphy Business Sales and Urban Capital Network complement each other uh, very well. Um, I started Murphy Business Sales first uh, about five, maybe six years ago now, um, and it's part of a franchise system. Um, I had just recently gotten laid off in corporate America working for an oil and gas company, and it was like my second layoff within two years and, at, and my fourth overall, and I realized I needed to do something different. So um, along the way, um, I, I started out my career as an electrical engineer, and along the way, I got an MBA. And uh, during the time uh, while I was getting my MBA, I became interested in M&A. And um, I found an opportunity through this franchise that I, I can create my own path to M&A. So I bought a Murphy Business Sales franchise. And what we do is we work with business owners who are looking to exit or sell their business and I help them maximize the value, prepare for the sale and just carry them through the process from beginning to the mm -hmm. end, all the way from um, actually marketing the business to making it to the closing table mm -hmm. and vetting buyers and, 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 and all of the activities around that. Um, oh, not long after I started Murphy Business Sales, uh, I had an opportunity to uh, get involved in uh, angel investing. Mm -hmm. And uh, me and a, and a partner, we first put together uh, a couple of uh, syndicates through uh, SPV, mm -hmm. special purpose vehicles, to invest in early stage companies. Um, and we did it once and we did it twice. Um, and then we realized there may be a business opportunity there. Um, and then also what we noticed is that after we invested in these companies at a very early stage, mm -hmm. once they uh, started growing and they got uh, traction and VC backing, mm -hmm. um, it was harder to get an allocation to uh, participate in those uh, further rounds um, after the initial seed stage. So what we did with Urban Capital Network is um, we, we formed a, a, a platform and through relationships with venture capital companies, we've created a model where we democratize um, uh, venture backed high premium type of uh, investment opportunities and we make it affordable, de-risk and diversify for more people to get involved. So typically uh, once uh, a, a, a startup company is, is venture backed, the minimum investment is $250,000. Mm -hmm. And even if you have that, you have to know someone to get in. So we've kind of broken down some barriers to help people get in at a lower investment threshold. Um, and now they can participate in these wealth generating opportunities. That's amazing. And you're in your fourth fund, is that correct? Yes, we just closed our fourth fund. Um, and we've done four in about eight mo 18 months, sorry about 18 months. And they're typically smaller funds. Um, so, you know, and I use the, the term fund and SP, SPV synonymous, mm. synonymously. Mm. So, um, you know, our funds average around $1.5 million. Mm. I mean, the latest one we did was actually closer to 2.5. Mm. So we're kind of getting bigger and bigger. Um, but there are some SEC regulations and things like that that uh, really put some constraints on what we can do. Mm. And you recently invested in a SPAC, is that correct? Yes, yes, I'm very excited about that SPAC opportunity. So um, we were part of the sponsor group mm. uh, for the SPAC. And what that means is we were in before the SPAC even IPO. Mm. So we got in uh, and with, with some uh, founder shares and we have some warrants and we were able to open that up to our entire uh, investment uh, network, investor network. And um, we are, we're really, really excited about that. We feel really good about 
the investment thesis mm. of the SPAC mm. uh, or the acquisition thesis of, of the SPAC. Um, and, you know, uh, just to give the audience a little bit more color on, on what a SPAC is, it's really it's a shell company that, that goes public uh, with the intent to purchase a private company thereby the private company becomes public. Mm. So now we're just sitting back waiting for the acquisition of some company mm. uh, that uh, the, the SPAC is looking to buy. There's probably a few of them out there, but the, the one we're in is e-commerce um, uh, driven. Okay. Very exciting. Yep. Very, very exciting. Yep. So if you don't mind, let's go back to the to the beginning, we, the early roots. I'm always very interested in mm -hmm. how people started out their entrepreneurship journey. Mm -hmm. And I, I hear that you were a DJ at one time. Is that correct? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. So, um, you know, I started DJing uh, probably in junior high. Um, and um, it was really early uh, when DJing was really popular. Uh, and now it's, you know, it was just becoming popular. Now it's, it's really popular and now it's digital. Almost anybody can do it. But back then we used vinyl records, two turntables. Wow. And, and, and um, so, you know, I, yeah, I come from the old school um, when it comes to DJing. And um, uh, I turned that into a business uh, eventually. So by the time I was a junior in high school, I was DJing parties. Uh, I was DJing at school events. Um, and I took that to college with me as well. Mm. Um, and it really paid my way through college, not necessarily tuition and things like that, but I never had a, another job mm. in college. So um, I was having fun and, and DJing at probably some of the parties I would have gone to anyway. Um, but now I was getting paid to be there. Um, and it was, it was really a, a good thing for me while I was in college. And I probably would have never stopped had I not started traveling once I got my engineering degree. And the engineering degree uh, helped lead you to doing IT, is that correct? Yeah, so my degree is in electrical engineering and um, you know, I was always exposed to uh, technology through engineering. Mm -hmm. And I started out as an electrical engineer uh, doing um, uh, systems automation and controls, low voltage, integration and um, I, I did a lot of software as well as a mm -hmm. lot of development so coding um, and I did at one point I had an IT um, consulting business mm -hmm. um, that didn't last very long uh, I was just gaining some traction um, I, I started the business while while I was in New Orleans and um, just right before uh, Hurricane Katrina mm -hmm. I was supposed to uh, deliver my biggest project to uh, probably my biggest customer at the time, which wasn't very big, but it was big for me. Mm. Um, and I think, uh, I think I was supposed to deliver that that project to the customer on a Monday, and mm. I think that's when Katrina hit on that Monday. So it's just wiped out all of my clients as well as my business. Mm. So yeah, every everything just kind of fell apart there. And then I evacuated here to the Houston area and took the first corporate job I could get. Wow, that's amazing. And and during Katrina, I know you know our audience and I, myself have been through a lot of challenges in my life. But you had also mentioned to me that during that period of time, not only had you lost your business, but you had also lost your relationship. Is that correct? Oh yeah, yeah. That was a. Uh, I mean, talk about you know um, everything happening at, at at one time. So. Um, right around hurry, the time of Hurricane Katrina, mm. uh, my wife at the time uh, told me that she wanted a divorce, which was totally uh, unexpected. So, um, you know, that was probably, I mean, she had maybe mentioned it sometime that year, um, maybe three or four months. Mm. But um, we were kind of working towards a resolution. So, you know, at least I was anyway. Mm. Um, and then, like, I think the Friday before Hurricane Katrina hit, she was like, I can't work on this anymore. Yeah. You know, so it was like, oh, OK, you know, I had to deal with uh, an emotional hurricane, a, a physical hurricane um, all at once. You know, and then, you know, once the hurricane hit, we evacuated together um, with our kids. Mm. And I thought that. Maybe this could, you know, bring us back together, make mm -hmm. us realize that, hey, you know, life is short. We need to um, work through this. But eventually, you know, it, it, it didn't it didn't make it. So and it, and it didn't spark anything back. So 
Yeah, yeah. I started I started all over with, with everything um, from that point on. Everything. I mean, I lost everything. I lost my relationship. I lost my business. So I was starting from ground zero. It's amazing, and yeah. you, and this is a really a great story of renewal. I mean, you're a, you can really see in your life, that you go from DJing to IT, and, and even in the, the worst times of Katrina and in relationships, you're willing to always go back and restart and re, rebrand yourself and refine something in your life. Mm -hmm. When you look back in your life, is there some things that you'd want to share with our audience? I always ask, you know, I always ask my guests to share golden nuggets or those 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 pieces of wisdom when you look back and that say, you know, these are things that I want other people to know and, and I, I want them to, to learn from my experience. Is some things you'd like to share with us? Yeah. One big thing for me, uh, you know, going through everything, going through layoffs, going through a divorce, losing businesses, um, you know, I realized that, um, you know, nothing, nothing is guaranteed and you have control over very little in your mm -hmm. life. Um, but you do have control over your actions and your attitude, and you have to own it. Mm -hmm. um, you can't depend on anyone else to to provide the, the resources you need to to be su successful. Um, there's always people out there who can help, but you cannot depend on anyone but yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and and you have to know who you are as well. Um, and I think um, once you start losing things that you're connected to and tied to, especially something like a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that that was part of you and, and, and you may lose a little bit of yourself. Um, but when you know who you are um, and you 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 learn not to have to depend on something else in your life to define who you are. And that was difficult for me initially. So once I realized that I am who I am, independent of uh, what I do, who I'm in a relationship with. Um, that really helped me to uh, pull my bootstraps up mm. and and focus on my personal development, mm. which which I really needed. That's that's an absolutely powerful and beautiful lesson to share with our audience. Well, I think that's all the time we have for today. Okay. And L Lenny, I want to say a big appreciation to you. Uh, Lenny coming in from um, Murphy, uh, Murphy Business and Urban Capital mm -hmm. Network. Mm -hmm. And I'll look forward to seeing you again on Heart of the Hustle.